long time ago, there was this chief called Ru. Ru had four brothers and their wives and 20 young maidens. They came through this passage, and while coming through that, their canoe got stuck on one of the big rocks. They call their islands heaven on earth, but their legends are full of dreams gone awry. Ru brought the young maidens on the island and asked his four brothers to help him salvage the canoe. While doing that, one of his brothers got stuck under the coral and broke his back. And Ru named the island Akitua, after his brother's broken back. <laughs> At the end of the 1980s, Cook Islanders looked forward to a rosy future. Today, Matunga and his wife, Ariki, have given up. They're leaving paradise for what they hope is a better life abroad. The people in the comments said, uh, why you run away? Why you run from the problem? I said to them, this is my own opinion, I said to them, we, we, are, the, we are not the one who create the problem. It's <laughs> the people in the government. They should solve the problem. The problem, put simply, is that the government has gone broke. Along with 2,000 other government workers, Matunga's job is disappearing. The ukuleles he once made for a hobby are now a necessity to make ends meet. Like most Cook Islanders, he'd simply relied on the politicians' assurances that all was well in paradise. The country is in debt. I think they, they're not doing anything for us. <laughs> I mean, crazy. to my own opinion, they're only interested in their own pocket, yeah. not interested in, 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 in the people. Dad is expected to come home with a pay packet. Uh, this is the man who's responsible, Sir Geoffrey Henry, Prime Minister these past six years. Dislocating experience. And if they feel betrayed by you and the government, is that a surprise as well? No, it wouldn't be a surprise. Uh, I mean, like I said, they've enjoyed many years of prosperity, particularly under our administration. And then to suddenly f get hit by this, they're wondering what on earth is happening. I mean, what is that fellow up there doing, for goodness sake? They've got good reason to ask. In the 80s, the government borrowed to the hilt on the back of a tourist boom, only to find itself in the 90s with debts beyond its capacity, and profits, mismanaged at best, embezzled at worst. And there were no bigger failures than the Sheraton Hotel project. There's no better symbol for what went wrong with the economy than the Sheraton Hotel project. It collapsed amidst scandal and mismanagement and cost the nation $80 million in one fell swoop, doubling the national debt. Yet the government that presided over this catastrophe is now saying to its people, trust us, we'll get it right this time. Do you believe that there have been intolerable levels of both ineptitude and corruption in the Cook Islands? I know of no case of corruption. I know of no one who has been able to point to one single case of corruption. Well, there's much suspicion uh, surrounding the question of 20 or 30 mil million missing dollars from the Sheraton project, for instance. Well, we know where that money went, approximately, and we know how it happened, approximately. We cannot get to the facts because the company, the construction company involved, is now uh, non-existent. Are you, are you satisfied that uh, there's no one who, fr from your administration who took money in that fiasco? I am absolutely satisfied. I have no... No one has ever suggested to me the contrary. 
And no one has dared make that accusation in public because I'm not certain that they can back it up. Pro probably some of the people in it weren't even quite sure which way was forward because they didn't have the information. If there was such a thing as a receiver for a bankrupt country, Lloyd Powell would be he. Registration provision of information. Fed up with supporting the Cook Islands, New Zealand sent in one of its vaunted economic rationalists. So what have you got to do? What you've got to do, you've got to get rid of your current liabilities here. Who are your current liabilities? These are uh, liabilities to civil servants, trade creditors, mm -hmm. uh, back payment and wages. Lloyd Powell's liabilities are people. They're the government workers who can be found on each of the country's islands scattered across thousands of kilometres of the Pacific, islands like Aitutaki. They're people like Matio, 24 years in government service and now a shattered man, one of 2,000 sacked under Lloyd Powell's auspices. He sits alone in a room and reads the Bible, his self-respect in tatters. Today his daughter supports him and even speaks for him. It's very sad. It's very sad. So it came as a terrible shock for you, I suppose? Mm, well, in a way, you would say yes. You would say yes. And, you know, so many words you can say for that, but, you know, it's so... It, it's painful. It's painful. Mm. Um, and, Matthew, um, it's painful, your daughter says. Is that what you felt when you heard what was happening to you? Yes, my friend. Because everything... Which if some are there, devastated by the crisis, a few have found it a liberation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and kia orana. Kia orana means may you live on. The office on your left, that's the office I used to work for a long time. I was in government working for over 25 years. And Nani got out of the public service when she saw the writing on the wall and she still thinks it's the best thing that ever happened to her. I'm doing, I've resigned last year and doing my own little business, taking special people around to see our little island. And I enjoy Entrepreneurial so vision is not a strong suit in the Cook Islands, but the government and its New Zealand advisers are relying on people like Nani to show some initiative and restart the country on the capitalist road. Nane transports tourists, she usually brings them here to the government-owned Aitutaki Resort Hotel, haven for the rich and the island's major employer. At night, Nane sings here for her supper. And that's the rub of the new economic order. The locals get piecemeal employment, but they're shut out from any chance of owning a bit of their island's most profitable asset. By day, it presents a picture of utter tranquility, situated on one of the world's most beautiful coral atolls. Following the dictates of its New Zealand mentors, the government's flogging off hotels, airports and anything else saleable to raise money for its rescue package. This little piece of paradise could have been yours for $1.8 million, less than half its real value. But the Cook Islands government is so desperate to raise cash that the Aitutaki Hotel Resort, with its 30 rooms, its 75% occupancy rate and a prime bit of real estate, is being flogged off at fire sale prices to an overseas buyer. And that infuriates the locals, the people whose millions of taxpayers' dollars have gone into developing the resort. They say they should have had a chance to run it for themselves. One of the locals who tried to put together a syndicate to buy the hotel is Norm Mitchell. He tried to get the other landowners to air their grievances with us, but only his best friend George shows up. I think you were going to have four or five other landowners here today. Why aren't they here? 
Oh, there, some of them have gone fishing. Some of them are busy working. And in fact, some of them are camera shy. Yeah. Are they camera shy or are they shy of uh, what will happen if they're uh, seen talking uh, to us? As a, there's a lot. There's a lot. They're frightened of cameras, they're frightened of what the authorities here might say, and uh, they're, they're, they're easy scared of. So how come you're not scared of? Nah. So it's left to Norm to try to articulate their fears. And to us, this is an opportunity where we can prove our worth, what we have learned from our little wanderings around the world, come back here to build our own, our own uh, inheritance, our own island, to, and, and make sure that the, inter the money that we can harness this stays here to help to, to beautify the place, to build up. But we are not given that opportunity to do so. For many, like Matteo, the opportunity will never come. Ill-equipped to deal with a new economic order, the government has some blunt advice for them. Go back to the land, back to subsistence living, back to another era. But the reality is, the advice doesn't work. Like most islanders, Matteo has a mortgage to pay, bills that pile up and a few pigs and vegetables won't save him from ruin. So people are going back to another era, aren't they? They're regressing 30 years or more, aren't they? Not at all. In fact, I think they are moving forward. What, because what? they're going back to planting again as a means Absolutely. of existence? Absolutely, because, you see, the problem has been a tendency to rely on government fortnightly or weekly pay packet. A dependent syndrome had developed over these years, carefully installed in us by our colonial masters. So Thank you very much. So the government's asking you basically to go back to another era? Not asking us. It's forcing us there, I reckon. It's really forcing us there. Because if they were, if they were managing the, the, the beautiful dollars that we are getting from overseas aid funding, hey, I reckon we, we would have been a... Oh, what they say we are, a little heaven on earth? No, this, this is really, it's, it's pulling us back. Everybody is a fisherman, everybody is a, a grower. And who's going to buy their, their things? Say, for example, if you're a grower and I'm a grower, everybody's a grower, who's going to buy our, our veggies or our crops? Nobody. And we also want some money to buy things like sugar, milo, and to pay our, our electricity mm. and our phone. Mm. We've got no money. If, if, they are, if they are saying we have to depend on the land and, and the sea. Matunga has finished making his last ukulele. This weekend, he leaves with his wife and his children to try his luck with a job in Australia. And to those who are deciding to pack up and leave and giving up and go to Australia and New Zealand, what do you say to them? Oh, best of luck. Not stay here and fight? Well, I, I would rather that was the message that I got to them, because I really believe in the future of this little place. I have a great deal of confidence in its future. And all we need to do is to be able to hang in there and hang out and, and work this period out and together pull our resources together to, to get through this cloudy period. Uh, but uh, if Cook Islanders want to leave and in the expectation of finding greener pastures in the dull queue of Australia and New Zealand, let there be.